can you see two clusters on the in these points kind of sort of so what are the two clusters there is a row of pluses there and the row of pluses at the bottom so there are two clusters here right so i will not touch these data points right i will just do the following now do you see two clusters side by side so what essentially defines clusters is not the distance between the data points right it's more like the density of the data points right naturally when we think of clusters it's really things that where data points are really dense is one cluster and then we tend to draw the boundary between clusters where the density is lower right so i didn't change the data points so the initial set of data points you are very happy to say that okay the clusters are at the top and at the bottom right so what caused you to change your uh, clustering when i added the additional data points the density went up right the density went up in a different way so therefore you said oh okay the less least dense point is no longer between the two but vertically right no no not no longer horizontal but vertical was the low density points right if you run k means you might get anything i don't know right? depending on where you start off with right so the question is so if you are if, you, if your intuitive notion of clustering is to do with density so why don't you try to come up with a clustering algorithm that captures this notion of density right and then try to come up with a clustering algorithm that captures this notion of density so there is a very very popular uh, clustering algorithm called db scan it right, very popular algorithm called db scan that uh, uh, does density based clustering okay so db scan actually has a lot of terminology that they define right once all the terminology is defined then the clustering algorithm itself becomes nearly trivial okay but the terminology takes a while to get through okay so the basic idea is very simple right suppose i have a Suppose I have data points like this, right? Do you see two clusters here? Clearly, two clusters, right? Incredibly hard to get k means return these two clusters to you. But if you run k means, what will happen is you'll end up with a centroid somewhere here, right? Another centroid somewhere here, right? And it will say these data points are one cluster and these data points are another cluster. Uh, this is the biggest drawback with k means right so what db scan says is that two points belong to the same cluster okay if i can get from one point to another right by moving only through only through dense regions right only through points that are close by right two points belong to the same cluster right suppose i take um, let's take let's say i take this point right and i take this point right in fact they look pretty far away right if you look at the direct distance between them they are pretty far away in fact the points of other cluster which are closer to this than this point right but when you look at it you think that hey this thing is one cluster this thing is another cluster so what is the intuition here is that okay, i can keep hopping Right, no point to take a very big hop right i can keep hopping to things that are nearby and i can go from here to here right so if i take these two points the blue and the brown one right so if i take these two points there no way i can hop from here to here right because there is a this nice gap here right there's no way i can get from here to here only by 
going through dense regions right is that clear so that is the intuition that we are trying to capture here so what is it that we should define now first what i mean by a dense region right so that's essentially what we have to define so we'll start off by defining something called a uh, there are two parameters that db scan uses uh, one is called bin points the other one is epsilon okay, there are two parameters so min points essentially gives you some kind of a threshold on how many points would you consider as being dense right and epsilon gives you the area over which you will perform the count right so min point says okay if you have five points okay then you are in a dense neighborhood but where, where do i count these five points okay in a radius of epsilon around me you count the five points okay you count in the area of epsilon around me if you find five points then you are in a dense region right if you make the epsilon very large then it might encompass my entire input space then everybody will be dense so it doesn't make sense right the epsilon has to be small right likewise if i make my min points one point one or two points that means everything will look dense okay, unless i make my epsilon very very small so these are actually complementary things i can control my min points right, i can make the min points very very small right and then make the density high right or i can make my min points large with a larger epsilon and that, then also i can make my density high okay the effects that you will see are different for both right so i let you think about it which one I mean, what is the effect of increasing min points versus uh, 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 decreasing epsilon? Okay. So essentially, what I'm saying is, okay, take a data point, right? Take a radius epsilon around it. Okay, that's that's a that's a circle. Okay. So take take a radius epsilon around it and count the number of points. Okay, if this count is greater than min points, okay, then you call this a core point. Okay, take a data point, take a radi ball of radius epsilon around the data point, right? Count the number of points, right? If the number of points is greater than or equal to min points, right? number of points is greater than or equal to min points in that ball of epsilon then you call this a core point right a core point is a point that lies in a high density region that is the definition we have right. So we say a point is say that a point is density reachable okay a point is density reachable if there is a core point okay from which you can reach this point right by by traversing only through core points so this might not be a core point because it is at the border Right, I draw in a radius around it. I get I get only one point here. Okay, so this might not be a core point, right? But then, if I start here, let's say let's say this is a core point for sure. There's a lot of points in the in the thing. From here, okay, I can basically move to points within epsilon of itself, right? Which are in turn core points, right? So I can move move to I can move to core points, right? and finally reach this right. so at no point i should be making a jump greater than epsilon right because at the start in a core point i'll have enough points in the neighborhood that i can actually jump to something within epsilon right so so i, I make steps of size epsilon and i actually go through core points every time right. then we call them density reachable right so a point i is density reachable if there exists a core point from which i can reach here by jumping only from a core point to core point until the last step and obviously every core point is density reachable because it's reachable from itself 
right every core point is density reachable and then there will be this border points right which are density reachable from core points okay there might be other points which are not density reachable from core points which are essentially outliers okay right so these are the definitions we have so this is the first right these are the two quantities we need uh, this is okay these are not definitions this is the first definition what is a core point second definition third definition is density connected okay so i'll say two points i and j are density connected if there exists a core point k from which both of them are density reachable that makes sense right so what is density reachable i start from a core point and only move to core points right until i make the last hop to this guy so no point i'll be making a move greater than epsilon and all the points i visit in the in the on the way will be core points okay that is density reachable density connected is if i and j there exists one core point from which both i and j are density reachable then the i and j are density connected okay here is the next thing so i and j are in the same cluster if and only if they are density connected yeah, this is the definition of a cluster two points i and j belong to the same cluster if and only if they are density connected make sense sorry how do i implement this so i start off with any point right i pick up a random point right i figure out whether it's a core point or not right then okay i i okay if it's a core point great so i'll keep that as my starting point for the cluster how do i determine it's a core point i pick up a point look in the neighborhood figure out if there are epsilon i mean if there are min points within a neighborhood of epsilon if that is the case then i'll keep it right then what i do is i look at all the neighbors of that point and i look at all the neighbors of the point and each point in turn i'll check whether it is a core point or not right so each point in turn i'll check if it's a core point or not so any additional points i encounter when i do this check i'll throw it into my queue so i'll keep going right if i reach a point which is not a core point okay so i will not uh, insert the neighbors of that new neighbors of that point i'll just stop there if i reach a point it's not a core point i'll just leave that exploration go back to my queue to see if anything else is still there so i keep doing this until my queue becomes empty so all the points i have examined from the time i started till my queue became empty go into a single cluster isn't that sorry it's like a depth first search yeah it's like a depth first search you do that all these data points go to a single cluster now what i do i go and start at a random point which has not been assigned a cluster so far and then do the depth first search again till i find the uh, whole cluster so i do this and i'm done so the nice thing about this is i'm really doing only one scan through the data right so every data point i'll i'll actually look at it once right i'll examine the neighborhood right uh and then i'll go on but then the number of computation i'll do will be still significant so uh, dv scan is a slow algorithm even though i examine each data point only once but the amount of computation i do when i examine a data point is significant because i am looking at the radius epsilon and then we have to find all the neighbors within the radius so unless i have a very efficient data structure that will return to me the nearest neighbors very quickly right so this can take a significant amount of time in running so there are some efficient implementations of db scan out there uh it's really cool in that it gives you all kinds of arbitrary clusters right and so these kinds of things right whatever i drew there that you wouldn't be able to recover using uh k means or even uh, hierarchical clustering depending on the kind of cluster measures that you choose right uh cure might be able to give you or might not be able to give you this kind of clusters uh, depends on again how your sampling that you do and what you start off with and so on and so forth so whole bunch of imponderables but again the same thing with uh, ndb scan depending on your choice of min points in epsilon right you might get very weird results right uh yeah 
So if you look at uh, uh, the, the data mining textbook by Han and Camber, right, Michelin Camber Han uh, book, right. So they have actually horrendous examples of DB scan. In fact, I think they did a significant optimization to find out which are the worst parameters possible for min points in epsilon and they give you results because uh, they wanted to write a paper that said, hey, we have an algorithm that does better than DB scan. <laughs> so they said, oh, DB scan can perform really badly if you give it bad parameters. So let us give it bad parameters and then we will beat it. <laughs> right, so I mean, this, well, this assuming that they were actually being more fair than that. Uh, but the way, the, the way, the way look at the results, it looks like that. Huh? I mean, DB scan looks really horrendous and uh, their method, which is called <coughs> Chameleon. <laughs> huh? It's a, it's an acronym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I can I think C stands for clustering. I'm not sure about. <laughs> I'm not sure about that either. Uh, uh, so yeah, so yeah, it's 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 uh, it's an acronym. Did DB scan right? I just start off with some uh, arbitrary point and then I look at look at the exam uh, examine the clusters and so on and so forth. So what happens if I happen to start off at a boundary point instead of a core point. I will examine it, I will say okay, it is not a core point, I will throw it away. Right? So it will never get assigned to any cluster. So it will kind of be all by itself as an outlier even though it should belong to a particular cluster. Right? That is one thing. The second thing is uh, suppose I want to vary epsilon and I want to run the clustering again, I basically have to do it all over from the beginning. Right? So what optics does is gives you a clever way of ordering your data points such that right, for different values of epsilon you can recover the clusters very quickly. For the same value of min points, min points is fixed but epsilon changes. right? So it gives you a way of ordering your uh, scan through the data such that for different values of epsilon okay, I can recover the clusters very quickly. It is a really cool uh, idea.